This week I have Clint Hill, strength and conditioning coach on board, and we're going to talk about going back to the gym, and that's for you people that want to kick some tin, and for those people that want to be there standing, make sure you're doing it properly. Hey, mate, how are you? Good, mate. Thanks for that intro. Uh, as always, I, I always wonder what's going to come out of your mouth at that point in time. It's, it, it's like a it's like a uh, lucky dip to see what's about to come out. So thank you, buddy. Let's rip in. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by Hydroxyburn Shred Ultra, nootropic thermogenic. Shred Ultra is scientifically engineered to shred body fat, ignite metabolism, and boost all-day energy while enhancing cognitive performance, focus, clarity, and mood. It combines powerful fat-burning thermogenics, Garcinia, green coffee bean, guarana, caffeine, and an industry-leading four grams of acetyl L-carnitine with potent nootropic ingredients at effective therapeutic doses to give you maximum results. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy. And we're talking to Clint, who's not a massive CrossFit fan anyway. He's a strength and conditioning coach. He's been around for 23 odd years, Clint. Yeah, 25 now. 25. And you spend a lot of time training coaches and trainers. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll start nice and topical straight off the back of, of your intro there. You know, the, the CEO of CrossFit came out with some pretty uh, ridiculous statement, which has seen a rebuttal from, you know, the powers that be in the CrossFit world your rich fronings, you know, so on and so forth, where they've all renounced that they will remove CrossFit from their name and no longer have anything to do with CrossFit headquarters. So it's been a been an interesting. That's been a lifeblood of a lot of training athletes for a long time. That's a that's a big a big change in the fitness industry. And I don't want to go on with what he said because I've got my differing opinions on that. But you want to talk about those CrossFit boxes now and the ones that move away from that. There yeah. could be a lot of potential issues. Where like, can they actually train people anymore? Yeah. So so I guess the the, the big thing here is as you as you move away from affiliation with an organization like CrossFit, there becomes a couple of very simple issues. What is the minimum qualification required to train clients, to mm-hmm. take classes, et cetera, et cetera? So for example, you know, I, I've preached this for many years that you know the the education and certification process for personal training, for group fitness, and for functional training needs to be heavily governed and needs to be reviewed on a lot of uh, a lot of levels you know a lot of these guys have a you know a, a basis of a uh, of a crossfit certificate one or a level one certificate in crossfit and and that gives them the insurance to train people correct yeah. out of a crossfit gym yep okay now uh there are there are some loopholes that mean that they can do some things from home and some things you know out in parks and so on but realistically you know the big thing for me is you know i've, I've always preached that there should be a minimum cert three cert four qualification in in fitness for the these people across the board and that Fitness Australia should really take control of governing what occurs here. I mean, I guess through the whole COVID thing as well, there was there were a lot of interesting discussions around what does Fitness Australia do? What guidelines do they have? And, you know, I had a lot of people going, Fitness Australia do nothing, da 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 And uh, I kept coming back to them with the fact that, uh, you know, it had been a long time since Fitness Australia had had control over the fitness industry, but they were still looked at as the governing body. So it's been an interesting one, my friend. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough place to be, the governing body, but not the governing body. Yeah, so they're listened to by the government, <clears throat> but they're uh, but they're not actually the governing body of, of fitness in Australia. Yeah, it's a crazy place. Mate, let's, yeah. w- let's jog on from that. that. Just for all you people out there that have been training in a CrossFit box, and then suddenly the word CrossFit drops off, just make sure you're insured. Yep, please do so. Yeah. And, and that just means, you know, just check into the, the qualifications of the trainers, make sure everything's okay and above board. I would believe that in most cases, a lot of these trainers will have Absolutely. Other, other degrees and so on and so <laughs> forth. But I just want people to be careful. Yeah, you just don't want to get hurt and find you're not sure. No, that's right. Yeah. That's right. People yep. are owed that right when they go to train. Absolutely. Mate, let's talk a little bit about COVID-19. Uh, the gym industry in Australia got devastated from our business. It's been devastating from the people who we talk to every day. It's been devastating. Doors just shut. People, a lot of people running online and not yep. being paid for it, like doing the goods. Like there's a lot of goodwill and great gestures that have come out over this period, which has been great to see 
in the fitness industry, but it's really time to get our work-life balance back. So someone who coaches PTs, what advice have you got for people out there? Yeah, look, Greg, I think the uh, the real interesting part of this, and, and I'll sort of give you a little background here too. So, you know, my business is, is primarily based around mentoring other trainers, helping yep. helping them with their business and so on and so forth. And, you know, helping get everyone online in the first couple of weeks was, was instrumental in making sure that they, a lot of these guys had continued incomes. But now it's working out what the work-life balance is that, that they actually want, mm-hmm. okay? Are they going to go back to the same hours that they were running? You know, like uh, I, I had a wonderful conversation with a PT from uh, here from the Shire. And he You're a Shire just, boy, are you? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Wouldn't, don't, have, don't even want to go there if I don't have to. But, um, I love un- the Shire. Unfortunately, I still do some work down there. So uh, there's, there's a lot of things about the setup that were, you know, hurting his business. You know, mm-hmm. he was starting at 4 30 it was you know it was doing damage to his family life and and whatever else as soon as COVID hit shut the doors of his gym and and all of a sudden he realized that by doing 15 pt sessions a week he was actually making nearly the same amount of money with no overhead stress yeah got you so mate i guess the big thing is that's come out of this for me is i've really hammered home a lot of my guys on what is their priority do you want to be in a situation where you're working 50 hours a week to make 150 grand a year or do you want to be in a situation where you're working 30 hours a week to make 110 grand a year you know so there's a there's a lot of uh, i guess a lot of scenarios that have unfolded to get people to where they want to get to and you know i've pushed all of my guys on making sure that they talk about what is the priority for them first, then their gym and their clients second. Yeah, nice. I mean, that, that's great advice too, mate. What, what does it mean for training in the next 24 months? Are we going to see a lot more people that go, I don't need the bricks and mortar anymore? Mate, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I believe that what's going to occur is this. So straight up, a lot of people have gone out and bought a whole bunch of fitness equipment to start with, okay? So, you know, people are not going to go back to the gym in the same uh, droves that they were training at before. I think you're going to find a lot of people will be looking at more often than not getting a friend over to train or getting a couple of friends over to train, which has obviously increased the amount of online programming and those kind of things that have occurred. The second one, and probably the biggest one, is what will actually occur here in a gym is the service must go up. That's otherwise. not a bad thing for the industry, though, mate. That's oh, a good mate, thing. That's the best thing. I'm, I'm ecstatic about that because and obviously- I was talking to Dr. Mack about yep. gyms of the future. He goes, mate, back in the days when he first started playing that area, they had to stand there and wipe down the equipment after a client and do all yeah. these things that he just said, we're going to have to go back to what it used to be like. Mate, and so it should, you know, like it, it, we are part of the service industry. The idea that we we stand, you know, I guess at a, you know, at a counter and wave to people as they walk through and don't know their names. And, and a lot of the big gym chains have got that as an issue because they're a, they're a volume style business, right? But now... You know, Mar and Park Kettles Gym down the corner is, you know, it's it's much more a community based. And the community stuff that occurred through all of these Zoom calls and, and things like that, mate, it's gone through the roof. Service in our industry will never be the same again. Yeah. I think it's I mean look, it did it in our business too, mate. Like people like yourself and, and a heap of other people jumped on board our Facebook lives and did a lot of talking to people during the heavy COVID period. And our feedback mechanism through to our office was inspirational. You know, people yep. were going, I'm so glad you did that, got to talk to people I normally can't talk to i mean yeah. you know people normally have to go to a course or something to deal with you or get or, or pay a large hourly rate to work with you yep. on that you, you were giving out that advice over that time for nothing yep. and it was and it's not that we were deflating your value it's really good to see that what happened over this period was we evolved and we changed and we were agile enough to create those with friends of body science and it's right. really good to see that we were able to give a lot back to the community like the people have come to me and said oh i love your chef i love this i love that and people just saying to me oh i was re- really busy the other day I, I was caught at so-and-so so i just did one of andy Jin's programs really quickly yep. and you know yep. it's just, and that's walking to the surf so it's, yep. it's really cool to hear those type of stories coming back across and, the, um, and mate, i think that'll service desk yeah and i think that'll be one of the things that changes going forward as well like so i mean you know i enjoyed that i know luke Curry. I know that, you know, Harriet loved that stuff. Like there are good people too, us, mate, like really good, solid yeah, people in the industry. Yeah. yeah. And, and mate, the thing is, right, like for, for us, you know, if you, if you look at it in two streams, right, you know, I, I always believe you kill them with kindness, right? Like yep. there's a, there's a simple, simple philosophy that if you give first, you'll get back. Yep. Okay. Pretty simple, making sure you understand that, you know, and that doesn't mean, you know, give out the world for free. I totally understand that. But, you know, as part of the body science family, I think one of the biggest things that I've 
always noticed is if I can call up any one of those guys and get something, you know, hey, I'm wondering about this. Hey, I know this answered, blah, blah, blah. And it can be done, right? But the point is that I think we we actually also translated that across to the general public. You know, I I, I threw up on my Instagram just the other day. I said, righty guys, I know there's some people out there doing it real tough. Mm. So I said, okay, guys, I'll offer five one-hour consults for free. Just sat down with five different business owners and helped them with, you know, getting back to, to what it's going to be like after COVID. I think it's really important to remember that, you know, this is not just a service industry. This is also an industry to help people. You know, we all got into this to help people. Absolutely. So don't forget the uh, the finer points of life. Luke Mathers, author of Stress Teflon. going to talk about calm stress support, a new tablet we've launched, mate. You've been a uh, part of the development of that product? Yeah, it's been great. It's been really good. I particularly like it on those times late at night when your head's rolling around and your things are whizzing around your head and you can't quieten it down. A couple of calm stress support at night and off you go, Zed Land, here we come. Yeah, nice. For me, it's in the morning. Get up, get that focus. Don't let all those incoming bad drive-in emails, I'd say bad boss, but don't talk about myself. For me, it's a morning product. I love it. I start every morning with it. So for me, it's uh, definitely about that. Yeah, just the, the fact that the science on it is amazing, How just how quickly it gets the cortisol down. Cortisol's varied. You're meant to have cortisol. It's good stuff, but you mm. don't want it there all day. Anyone interested? Bodyscience.com.au. Check it out. So, mate, speaking of the finer points of life and, and let's keep it in the fitness industry bubble, where are we at priority-wise now? With let, let, Let's talk about as an individual what I should be looking for, my priorities, but also as a, a trainer or gym owner, what some of the priorities would be moving forward. What can I expect? Yeah, look, I guess, you know, the, the first thing that I've I've consulted with a lot of people about over this period of time, and, and I'll give you a really interesting stat started off and then we'll lead into it. So German soccer was the first professional, sorry, second professional sport to go back. Korean uh, and Taiwanese baseball went back before that, sorry. You know um, you're wrong, it was the NRL. Yeah, yeah exactly. But that's okay, yeah. So, so when, when German soccer went back, they actually realized that their injury rate was up 75%. Is that right? Huge, huge, okay? So everyone has been looking at those stats and you can even see the first two weeks of the NRL there were some interesting syndesmosis injuries and a few other little bits and pieces now the piece of advice that I have for everyone there is realize if you've been doing a particular type of training right so let's say because you didn't have access to your gym you go back and you do all of this you, you've been doing a whole bunch of more running than you'd ever done before heaven forbid that anyone actually runs but the the concept behind that became that if you've gone and done that and then you've gone back and done a gym workout you get big time doms you potentially risk injury, et cetera, et cetera. So what I can see occurring is very simple. People are going to go back to their old weight and either be incredibly sore or risk injury. Yeah, that's okay? true. I didn't think of that. So it's about making sure that you prioritize what you're what you're wanting to achieve, set new goals for yourself, go through things with your trainer, your, the, the owner of the gym that you work out of, the CrossFit, well, no longer CrossFit box, but uh, understanding and looking into making sure that, that everything that you do is still programmed and prioritized and, and actually set out in a nice periodized plan so that you don't risk those injuries. Yeah, nice, nice. What about for the uh, young guy hitting the gym for the first time? What should they be looking for? And I'm always about new people hitting the gym, so I want to bring this up. What type of things should they be looking for working to a gym now when there's rules around uh, courtesy etiquette? Like what are some of the priorities that they need to understand when they walk into a gym now? Yeah, look, I, I think, um, you know, interestingly for me, one of the one of the key topics that's that come out of this is respect um and and obviously you know if you're if you're brand new to a gym respect the fact that the people that are already there the people that have been you know working training living out of there so to speak for for however long go and ask their advice get a program written run through things but also be incredibly respectful around the cleanliness around the using a towel your own water bottle make sure that you're not coughing spluttering etc etc follow the covid guidelines and whatever else but also understand that realistically the whole emphasis on what you're trying to achieve in the gym comes down to what your goals are if you want to go back to playing footy or you want to go you know run 100k you know ultra marathon it's it's all the same as far as setting a goal working backwards towards that and and going through the processes but find a good coach mate speaking of coaches these days people need to need to walk and ask for someone who's got a cert for at minimum is that right yeah look i mean as certainly in the commercial gyms that's the absolute minimum required you can get away with uh, and as I was sort of alluding to early in the piece, uh, you can get away with a, a level one CrossFit. You can get away with a level one ASCA strength and conditioning qualification to do certain things and work in some private facilities. But realistically, the minimum 
qualification is still a cert three, cert four. And I still tell people that, that you know, you must remember that the only way to gain experience is doing. Yeah. So remember that if you if you go to a trainer that's that's brand new, okay, you know, I think the, the really clear part about experience is understanding that people need to still blend that experience and expertise with the qualifications, yeah. making sure they've still gone through that cert three, cert four process, making sure they're doing some continuing continued education because realistically this field changes so quickly and so incredibly diverse that you need to continue to upskill yourself on a daily basis. Mate, speaking of careers and happiness, yep. is being a coach or a, a personal trainer still a good option? Mate, look, it's incredible, right? So obviously, you know, most of most of the people that will have listened to me on, on your podcast before will know that it, that I own a Cert 3, Cert 4 company, a, a registered training organization. Well, let's give it a plug. What is it? <laughs> Pillar, Pillar Training and Education Group. Um, How about you give us a website? <laughs> www.pillaredu.com.au. So I guess the, the big part of, of all of this for me has always been continuing to make better trainers and so on and so forth. But what I've really noticed in this period that, all, that most of the people that contacted me were looking for career change. Nice. Okay. So I've got four lawyers doing their Cert 3, Cert 4 now, which I was like, okay, well, you're going from, you know, suit and tie and, and shitty shoes to, uh, as we discussed prior to the conversa- uh, prior to the podcast, GY, neither one of us will put shoes on in 12 weeks. <laughs> so the concept here is that what is, what do you want? You know, as, as, a, as a, a human, as a, as a person in this, this world, what is it that you want to achieve? You know, do you want that work-life balance like we talked about before? before. Mate, fitness, the fitness industry is going to go through the roof in the next 12 months. And I know for a fact that, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Fitness First and so on and so forth have had huge numbers of trainers leave their doors. Two of the biggest here in Sydney, one which had 52 trainers prior to COVID, so now has 22. Wow. So 30, 30 of them have decided not to go back. And that's with six weeks rent free period to try and get them back in the door. And it's just because they've gone home, they've set up a home gym, they're having more enjoyment out of being able to spend a little bit more time one-on-one with their clients and their clients are happy with that. They'd prefer not to go back to that corporate megalodon that uh, that is, you know, the commercial fitness industry in Australia. Oh, the landscape is definitely changing. Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh. And I think, you know, the supplement industry is going to change too, right? Like because, and, and I've spoken to a lot of trainers about this and I said to you prior to this conversation, I've had I've had five of my, of the people that I mentor come to me and ask for the details to become a, a distributor for body science because one of the key parts to this is firstly they're looking for a better service option and I've been plugging this on all of my calls with them I've just been going you need to provide more you need to provide more you need to provide more service is the key to keeping people happy now okay and if you want to separate yourself from one of the big commercial chains that's how you do it yeah so yeah yeah. it's 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 more than just training someone on how to uh, form and function it's the role really is you know mentor life coach yeah (laughs) Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I remember speaking to Macca about this, you know, a couple of years ago when I was up there doing a podcast with you. And, you know, I we spoke in depth about what it was like in the early 90s for mm-hmm. us, training, you know, and it, it, mate, the first gym I walked into every single that we didn't need a membership card because the guy behind the counter knew my my mum, my dad, my dress, my sister, my yeah, cousin, exactly. my you know, because that was just what that was like. You know, that was a, it was it was real community. It was real understanding of what was was happening and going forward. And I see a lot of that happening in the future. Oh, well, you look at you look at the other elements of the fitness industry, like the, and I'll use the supplement industry because I know it really well. It's gone through the clean label, the being able to see what's in a product and why it's yep. in a product, and you've got drug tested brands coming more and more on board now. Because people know that that's just another layer of trust. Yeah. When you look absolutely. at a product, well, it only makes sense that this will go through the gym industry as well. And you've got your 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 smaller boxes that are doing group class training that are very much based on community yeah, and absolutely. service. You know, they may not be sitting there training you one on one, but they're definitely there for you when you walk in, there for you when you walk yeah. out, and there for you during your train. Yeah. You know, so yeah. this hybrid is going to come out. It'll be really interesting to see what happens with it. Look, and I think the the other key to that is going to be understanding that at the end 
end of the day, we all we all realise that now it's it, it's changed, mm. and and not one of us saw it coming. Not one of us knew that it was going to happen, but we all knew that something had to happen to make the change. Yeah. So look, I mean, I'm I'm really excited about the next twelve months. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's um, great to hear. I think it's going to be the change that we needed. Yeah, good. So you know, and and I spoke to a, a, a mate of mine a couple of weeks ago who is is working. So he's in the medical industry. He's medical devices. And he was saying to me that the thing that he has noticed the most is that everyone around him is looking for not just how they can fix what's happened, but how they can stop the same things happening again. So for them, it's prevention again, rather than looking into what will actually occur in the future, which look, I think, you know, for the fitness industry, that's, that's amazing. You know, if we can start getting, you know, these, these 40, 50, 60 year old people back into the gym or into the gym for potentially what could be the first time, there's definitely an element there that occurs that means they're actually in the prevention rather than cure. Yeah, I like right? that. So I certainly hope that's the big change that I get to see, you know, in the next few years. And mate, your group, of, obviously the people that run around and train people and do what you do, it's a it's a select group of people. Are, are you guys all getting together to work out where things are going to go and what's going to happen with the industry? Yeah, look, I've, I've, I'm on a couple of different panels at the moment that are, that are doing some work in that particular area. And one of which... I guess has been fairly instrumental in not just not just where the industry is going, but how we're going to make sure the certifications are actually making people happy. Yeah. How we're going to govern the industry correctly, because because I promise you right now it's an absolute survival. And one of the other big things about it is that that people want direction. Mm. People want to see where are we going with this. Okay, not just where is the industry going in the sense of, you know, you're going to be able to support me down in the future. But if there's a if there's a discussion around insurance, for example, right, there's three or four different major players in the insurance in the insurance game in the fitness industry. And like, they can dictate their price. Yeah. Right. There's no there's no competition. You know, it's not like the car insurance industry where you have to put up online what the other what the other business is paying and you can see exactly what that is and you pick it based on, oh, do, do I meet? the criteria for that you just ring them up and hope for the best yeah wow right so there's there's lots of smoke and mirrors in the fitness industry which you and i've spoken about in the past and i've spoken to pico about and on on a lot of occasions so it's really it's really key to make sure we look into what people need what people want and how to make the industry better yeah, because nice. at, at the end of the day mate like you know if you're trusting someone with your health and your fitness you want to know that they're well qualified well educated make sure that they've actually you know doing the right thing by you Safety and results. Absolutely. Pretty yeah. simple. Nice. Thanks for coming on board. It's been a while. We haven't have had a chat for a while. And obviously, we've uh, all, well, I've been hiding in my little COVID shell up here on the Gold Coast and uh, enjoying surfing, not like the rest of Australia, but that's life. Mate, that was probably one of the weirdest things of COVID, seeing Maroubra Beach shut down. Oh, that's, I would have uh, been devastated if it happened it was, up here. Was, like, I just. Yeah, it was devastating, mate. That's for sure. But I will, I will make mention that I'm sitting here in a t shirt and you have a jumper on. Mate, it almost reached 25 today. It's getting cold. It's getting freezing up there. <laughs> Apparently. Wow. It has been cold mornings. It has been very cold mornings. <laughs> well, that's life. Very- Mate, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Mate, any so, final words for people out there? Mate, look, I guess the, the big thing is, you know, get out there, get back into your fitness, uh, support those who supported you. And, and you know, I've talked about it a lot over this period that it's about supporting the local businesses, the small companies and, and you know, help those who, who uh, are in need. Um, treat people with a bit of kindness and make sure that uh, you, you really do look after those around you that, you know, are probably struggling. You know, there are families that, uh, you know, have, have you know, really struggled struggle to get through this period and and had huge amounts of income taken away from them and of course the uh, government surplus has helped but uh, that that can only last so long so let's let's get back and and really support the local businesses around you whether it's a coffee shop a uh, sub store or whatever it may be mate yeah let's get out and get the fitness industry going Absolutely. That'll help us all. Thanks for coming <laughs> on board, mate. If people want to uh, contact you, how do they get you? Uh, probably best uh, email is clint at hillstrengthandperformance.com.au. You love that email address. Is that um, A-N-D or an ant sign? What is it? <laughs> and, A-N-D. Yeah. Um, and dot com.au? Dot com.au. And then uh, probably the fastest way to contact me is uh, via Instagram, clint underscore hillstrength. Nice. DM away, kids. DM away. <laughs> mate, thanks for coming on board. Really appreciate it. It's uh, nice to be able to talk about 
about the industry kicking off again. It was great news to hear that Australia's opening up. Yeah, and uh, let's all go and get rid of those beers and fridge sessions we all had when we were <laughs> locked away. Uh, thanks very much again, GY. And, uh, and I hope all of your listeners have a happy and safe week. So uh, all the best, everyone. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.